subscribe. Hi everybody and welcome. My name's Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. Today I'm going to do a video on how to, how to hold the violin bow. I have mentioned this in a video before. I think it was part of my um, violin lessons one to ten, but I thought I would just do a, just an actual video just exactly on how to hold the bow. Um, I've done another video on various different types of bow holes, just, just talking about them. Um, a, few of, a few of you have mentioned that your violin, your violin teacher tells you to hold the, viol the, the bow a little bit different and this, that and the other. So I'm gonna show you the way I hold my bow, the way I teach my students. Um, before I do that, I do want to mention that there are, there are a few different bow holds. Um, the one that I use is the Franco-Belgian bow hold. It's the same bow hold that actually Itzhak Perlman uses. Um, you can get the Russian bow hold, you can get the German bow hold, they're, they're all very valid. A lot of the, the modern um, violinists of, of today kind of sometimes use a combination of them all or they use variations of, so they'll use the Franco-Belgian grip but it'll be ever so slightly altered but it still comes under the Franco-Belgian kind of heading if you like. So I use the Franco-Belgian bow grip. Um, lots of, I must just mention as well that lots of teachers kind of come to blows over this. So what I'm saying is not 100% gospel. If your teacher tells you to hold your bow ever so slightly differently, that's absolutely fine. Um, but I mean, as, as long as there are mainly three things that happen, and I'll go into details in a second, but the second finger, all of the bow grips have the second finger is, is basically in line with the thumb. Um, there should be no, no tension in the hand, so no one finger should be working harder than all the others. They should all be they should all be doing their job in holding the bow. And really, as long as your bow grip allows you to do all of the bow techniques under the sun, then it's happy days for everybody. So you know, if, if if you hold it ever so slightly differently, that is absolutely fine. But this is mainly just for beginners who want to know how to hold the bow. This is one way of, of holding the bow. Um, there are lots and lots of different ways. So please don't, please don't kind of put comments saying that, 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 that my way is wrong and, and your teacher told you something different. Nobody's wrong, everybody's right, nobody's wrong. There are just many, many, many different bow holds. So this is mine anyway. So the first thing that, that you need to notice is that you've got the, the frog here and then you've got this sort of black plastic part here. So what you need to do is put your thumb in the gap that you've got there. So you should have a little gap between the frog and the plastic part here. And that's where I put my thumb. Now you need to make sure that the thumb is bent. So the thumb cannot be rounded, the thumb must be bent. And what I like to do is just sort of wedge it just in that gap between my, my fingernail and, and my, my thumb. So um, I can feel that the wood here has got a sort of hexagonal sort of, um, or little lines in it, it's not, it's not smooth and round. So what I do is choose one of those lines and kind of wedge my, my fingernail in there so it keeps my thumb nice and bent. The next thing that you need to do is to put the, the middle two fingers around and what you'll find is that the thumb should be opposed to or opposite the the middle finger there and the third finger or the fourth finger sorry just sort of just drops down sort of next to it so it's your your thumb is almost in between the two fingers if if you like by the time you put the rest of your hand on but it should be the thumb should be opposite the the middle finger so if you put the thumb in first then put the middle finger around then the fourth finger should drop in nicely the will 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 sort out the details in a second but then your index finger should come over and it should for me it just sort of touches the it actually goes on on the silver part of the bow here so you want to be sort of having it in that kind of that sort of uh, knuckle, the first sort of knuckle part that you get here, not not right near the hand. It shouldn't be here. It should be here, not here. If if you have if you have it there, so you're holding the bow, so that you're holding the bow, so it's it's there. It's next to to that part there. Then that's that's more of the the Russian bow grip. So the Russian bow grip is is very slanted. We're doing the Franco-Belgio bow grip. So it's I'm just lifting it off slightly. So I'm in that first 
knuckle there. And you can also see that I'm actually slanting the fingers. My fingers aren't straight, I'm actually tilting them. Again, if you tilt them too much so that you're tilting to that, that knuckle part there, then that's the Russian bow grip. So I'm not gonna tilt that much, but enough really so that my little finger is just sort of resting kind of on top there. So tilting, I think, is, is the key to doing all of this. So it should be nice and tilted there. Not straight, just tilted. You'll find that um, it, it might be a little bit um, uncomfortable to start with, um, but it's like anything. You'll 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 soon get used to you'll soon get used to how it's how it's held. So let me just go through that again. So you're going between the the piece the free piece of wood of the bow that you've got there. The thumb goes in. If you sort of angle from as if your thumb is trying to go towards the ceiling, so up and under. Thumb is bent. Two fingers go across so that mainly your middle finger is in line with your with your thumb there. Fourth finger covers that more or less the little mother of pearl bit that you've got there. Index finger goes into the first knuckle joint that you've got here, not near the hand, first knuckle joint. And then that should be enough. If you do that, if you go into that knuckle joint there, you should find that the little finger just sort of sits on top. Now I don't have my little finger all the way over here. If I move my hand so that my little finger is literally resting on the, the bit that you, you tighten and loosen the bow with, then again, you're going into another completely different type of bow hold. So I'm just before you get there. So this is the bow grip that I'm using. And this is the bow grip that I teach my students with. So you can see my thumb is nice and bent. My wrist is nice and up as well. And I'm able to bend my fingers. I've got plenty of flexibility when I'm when I'm moving the bow, so I know I can do all those sorts of things there. So if if my fingers weren't in the right place, I wouldn't be able to flex them nice and nice and easily. So that's that's the bow hold, and that's the bow hold that I teach, which is pretty much the Franco-Belgian bow hold. Um, I might even go so far as to say that it might be the most popular bow hold, but um, a lot of people do the Russian bow hold as well. So I think it just completely depends on well, obviously it depends on, on your teacher because what your teacher has been taught will teach you. So it really just depends on where where you come from in the world as to what you do. But everybody is correct. As long as there's no tension in the bow hold, so no one finger should be holding the bow more than the other. Everybody's doing their job and the weight and the tension is spread nice and evenly. The thumb and the middle finger always seem to be opposite each other. And I'm able to do any technique under the sun that I want to do with this bow hold, so it's going to work for me and it's fine. So as long as you've got those three, those three things down, then it doesn't matter. So that is your bow hold. It's really, really important that you don't go anywhere or you don't try and play anything until you've got that, that bow hold. And it might take you a little while to get to get to grips with the bow hold, but if, if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. You can actually practice it on a pen or, or a pencil or something. You can you can do the same sort of thing. I know I've got a, a pen here, for example, but you can still do the same thing there as well if you want to do it on the if you want to do it on a pen, it doesn't really matter. Um, one of those pencils that have the sort of hexagonal sort of um, I don't really know what you call them, but um, the hexagonals that have the, the not not the smooth pencils because um, more often than not most people's bows are are sort of hexagonally 50 pence piece kind of shaped there I'm sure there's a word for it but I can't think of it right now so a pen or a pencil so you'd be practicing that in in class or I don't know on the bus or wherever uh, wherever you want to do and you can help that will help you get used to the bow hold so that's how to hold the bow. Um, do go and follow my other violin, violin lessons. I've got violin lessons one to 10, various different techniques as well. But that is very simply how to hold the bow. It's how I hold the bow. So that's how I'm telling, telling you to, or suggest to you how you can hold the bow as well. So thanks very much. I really hope that's helped and I'll see you all next time. Subscribe.